What is up guys, I hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're back with some more r slash entitled parents. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too. And a huge thank you to the members of our channel. We have another new member yesterday, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Chloe Hopewell. The last couple of days, I've been a bit of a choosing beggar, asking for likes and comments and stuff like that. But you guys have responded and you've made a huge difference in the way the videos get responded to by YouTube. There's actually been a lot more views, a lot more comments and a lot more likes and it's made a massive difference. So thank you so, so much for that. It really keeps me inspired to keep on making videos like this. Thank you so, so much. And with that being said, let's get into today's stories. Much love, guys. Entitled mother yells at restaurant employee because she can't eat with her family of five, then tries to kick me out. I witnessed my second wild Karen encounter today. In Hong Kong right now, the virus isn't that bad, so we can still go out but wearing a mask is strongly encouraged. Some places require it. So today my friends and I decided to go eat ramen at a restaurant in the city. Just me, my friend and another friend. Restaurants close down seats for social distancing, so there are less seats available. Now this ramen restaurant is not very big, so there are only a few seats available. So here's the cast. EM, entitled mother. OP, me. F, friend. W, waiter. And M, manager. So we're just minding our own business when this group of six walks into the restaurant. There are only a few seats available, so waiter informs them that they have to wait for the tables to clear up before they can be seated because seats are closed for social distancing. EM says, um, what do you mean I have to wait? The waiter said, because of COVID-19, we close seats for social distancing. She said, oh, okay, why don't you seat us there? She says, pointing to a table with a sign clearly stating, close for social distancing. The waiter said, as I said, they are closed, and the waiter gets cut off. Oh, it's fine. Just seat us there. We don't have the virus. The waiter said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. That's, and gets cut off again. I'm sorry, I'm not asking you to seat us there. I'm telling you to, so please do so now. The waiter said, if you wait 20... And again, is cut off. EM said, come on, my angels are starving. She says this as she points to her family, consisting of toddlers, whining about having to eat ramen. Waiter says, we can seat you over at the bar if you guys don't need to eat as a group. Without even thanking them, she marches her family over to the bar and rips off the signs to make space for her kids. The waiter says, I'm sorry, I can't have you do that. She says, I can do whatever I want. I am a customer. I'm sorry, but if you can't respect our rules, you must leave. She says, let me talk to your manager. The waiter scoffs and goes to get the manager, who is one of the chefs. The manager says, what seems to be the problem? Your rude waiter refused to let me sit at the table, so I had to sit here. The manager says, I'm sorry, but you can't sit here. There are signs stating that these seats your kids are sitting on are closed for social distancing. I don't care. I want to eat with my family. They're starving. I understand, but if you can't respect these rules, I'm going to have to call the police. She said, no, I'm a loyal customer and I've been for a month and I deserve better service. The manager then says, if you wait, we can seat you over there. He gestures to our table. The EM says, okay, how long is the wait? The manager says, 20 minutes. EM gasps, then walks over to us. She says, you guys gotta go. And I said, what? You heard me, leave. You and your friends need to leave because you guys have been here too long. I said, uh, we're not done yet. To which EP says, don't talk back to your elders. The manager then says, if you don't leave now, I'm going to call the police for harassing my customers. Realising now that she can get in really big trouble, she and her entitled family leave. I ended up getting the meal on the house, but still, some people could still be entitled during an epidemic. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Edit 1, I thought I should add due to social distancing in HK, public gathering of more than four people are banned, so this Karen would not have been able to sit here with her big family. Also, thanks for these updates. Edit 2, since many have asked, I think the Karen was mainland Chinese that speaks Cantonese. I could tell by her accent. The dad was an expat, so I don't know. The dad had no idea what they were saying and just nodded. There was a great top comment on this one that said, they're even more entitled now because they have to stay home and all that entitlement is building up, which just gave me a great mental image of this Karen just exploding with anger. <laughs> Our next story is from Rennie Kellen. My dad sold my dog, who helps me with my mental health. Sorry this is long. Warning, I'm an idiot and a human, so there's definitely spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes, so sorry about that. Okay, let me start this off by saying I'm a 17-year-old female. 
my parents wouldn't let me have my own life until I turned 18, but this incident drove me to leave. So before I get into the story, I'll say that I have lots of stories from growing up with my dad, a narcissist who only thinks about himself and has no respect for anyone else, and my mum, who I can't say wasn't abused from what I know, but she enables him. I also want to say I still love my parents because they are my parents, but let me just say I want someone to shoot me in the head if I ever start to turn into them. Okay, sorry I was rambling, onto my recent story. So I recently posted this story on r slash am I the asshole, so you might recognise me from there. But anyway, let's set the stage, this was pre-lockdown, my area was still what was normal for us, so I've had this dog who I brightly named Tipsy as an 8 year old. She was brought for me and I've always been her actual owner. I feed her, I walk her, I take her to the vet, and I give her so much love. She's the total sweetheart and wouldn't hurt to fly. So, normally when I leave for more than a few hours, I drop Tipsy off at my friend's house. She has a dog, and the two love each other. So I was getting ready to leave for a week to go and see my grandma, who wasn't doing very well. I told my parents my plan, and that's when my dad's face lights up. Here's what happened. I said, hey mum and dad, I'm leaving to go and see grandma. I'll be leaving Tipsy at a friend's house. That's when my dad's face lights up. He then speaks up. He says, no, no, no. Why leave her there when we can watch her? You know how much we love her. At this point, I was very confused as my parents aren't exactly the type to spring to an opportunity to help me out. But I don't think much of it. I mean, they are my parents and they know how much I love her. So I let my friend know and Tipsy stays home with my parents. I left them a list to follow to make sure they fed her and walked her and didn't just neglect her. Flash forward a week. I get home and Tipsy didn't come running to me. Weird, but maybe she's asleep or downstairs. I go to find her because I miss her. I walk into my living room and say hi to my mum. And this is what follows. I said, hey mum, have you seen Tipsy? Ian barely looks at me. You should go talk to your dad. I said, oh, she's with him, okay. And I walk to the basement and there's my dad sitting on the couch, phone in hand. I said, hey dad, mum told me that you have Tipsy. He said, I didn't have her. And I said, well, where is she at? ED doesn't even look up from his phone at me and snarks, I sold her. I just sat there in shock. I thought he was joking because no sane person actually does this. I said, you're joking, right? And he said, no, I sold her to a nice family. At this point, I was in tears. I was on the floor sobbing. He sold my dog. She'd helped me through years of depression and anxiety. She made me feel safe and was my best friend. I couldn't look at them right now. I ran to my room, packed up and called my friend. She said I could stay at her house as long as I needed, so I went to her house. After I got there, I found out who my dog was sold to. I contacted them and they were so sweet, they completely understood what happened, but they had spent a lot of money on her and I got that, so I borrowed some money from my parents and paid them twice the amount they had paid for her. I got my baby back. I was so happy, but I was also raging. My dad had sold my dog that he knew I would die for and my mum did nothing to stop him. I thought that this couldn't get any worse. Then my sister texts me. My sister said, What did you do to mum and dad? I said, What are you talking about? Sister says, Mum and dad have been talking about you a lot. They keep talking about how you're an ungrateful brat and how you abandon them. At this point, I was livid. I mean, they were making me the bad guy after they went behind my back and sold my dog. I then cut off all communication with them. I officially moved in with my friend and we are sharing rent and utilities. I was so done. I wanted them to pay, but I remember these were my parents after all, so I decided I had my little victory with getting Tipsy back. I left it at that. I haven't talked to them in over a month, and Tipsy and I don't plan on being associated with them ever again. I'm so glad I got out of there before quarantine. This is definitely not the worst thing they've done, and if you want to hear more, I will gladly post. Also, if you have any questions, as I might not have explained this very well, I'll be glad to answer. Firstly, dog tax. What a floofy dog. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, holy shit, you got more stories on them and apparently they get worse. How can they get worse than selling your dog? <laughs> My god, these parents, they're just getting worse and worse. I'm glad you borrowed some money from your parents and used double the amount to pay them back though. You should have went with triple to be in all honesty. <laughs> wow, what do you guys make of that story? What if someone sold one of your pets? What would you do? How would you react? <laughs> Ah, oh, this is going to go mental. Our next story is from Berries and Pie. Karen doesn't like the fire alarm. I used to work as a custodian at a zoo, and as you can imagine, the zoo is like a meeting ground for entitled parents. We have this one restaurant in the zoo where the washrooms are out back. 
They're not directly in the restaurant, but they're still part of the building and they're hooked up to the same fire alarms as the restaurant. On one particularly busy day, the fire alarms started going off. As I was evacuating people, one lady pushed her way against the herd and into the washroom. I recognised her as someone who had been waiting near the end of the washroom line before the fire alarm went off. I kindly explained that the fire alarm was going off and that everybody had to be evacuated from the building. She ignored me and proceeded to plop her baby down on the changing table, very casually, as though she didn't have a care in the world. She slowly took off the baby's clothes and diaper while trying to sing over the top of the blaring alarm. She continued to blatantly ignore everything I said to her, so during this time I called in for backup. It was at this point that her baby started wailing from the loud noises. As soon as the baby started crying, the lady immediately whipped around and demanded that I turn the alarm off. Can't you see it's distressing my daughter? To which I told her, hell no, in the politest way possible. Leaving her daughter crying on the table with a full open diaper, she tried to get in an argument with me about how it's ridiculous, this alarm shouldn't be this loud, and why is there a fire alarm in a bathroom anyway? And my personal favourite, you shouldn't have loud alarms in places with a lot of babies and little children. It can damage their hearing. <laughs> Eventually, security arrived and removed her from the washroom. Since she spent more time arguing with me over the alarm than tending to her daughter, she ended up having to strap the dirty diaper back up and carry her daughter out. While she was putting the diaper back on the baby, she innocently told security that she couldn't change her daughter and get out fast enough because I was bothering her and that her daughter is probably going to get a diaper rash because of me. Hope she's disabled fire alarms at home. Don't want her damaging her precious daughter's hearing. Oh my god. <laughs> so yes, I think Karen would rather burn in a fire than have an alarm. <laughs> All I could picture this whole time when I was reading this story was that, that meme that says... Everything is fine with the, the little dog just sitting there with his cup and fire all around him. <laughs> Our next story is from Dream Arc. Why would you put them outside if they weren't for us to take? This story is from a couple of months ago and sadly instead of one entitled parent, it involves many, many entitled parents. Every year my family volunteers at a big fall fair with rides, games, crafts and a lot of locally grown food. This year some of the local farmers donated a bunch of pumpkins to the fair so they could create this beautiful pumpkin display. Less than an hour after the fair opened for the day and the pumpkin display is a mess. Many parents, the poor lost souls, had mistaken the pumpkin display for a playground. They stood to the side and chatted as though they were at a park while their children made a mess of the display. Climbing the pumpkins, throwing the pumpkins and kicking the pumpkins, smashing the pumpkins. We quickly evacuated the families. This caused the children to complain, which resulted in their parents giving us the stink eye for ruining their day. We tried to reassemble the display as much as we could and put up a sign right in front of it that said not to touch the pumpkins. Not long later, we returned to the display only to find the sign had been uprooted and tossed to the side and the display was destroyed again. There were broken pumpkins everywhere. There were also families who decided to go pumpkin picking with their children in the display, happily choosing out their favourite pumpkins and carrying them off. We tried to stop the parents, told them the pumpkins weren't for taking home. Many of them would claim, but my son really likes this pumpkin, and why would you put them outside if they weren't for us to take? We explained to the parents that there were many stalls at the fair where farmers were selling some pumpkins, but the replies mostly people complained about how they would have to pay for those pumpkins. There was even one lady who just looked at us and kept walking as we tried to stop her. Once again, we cleared out the people and this time shut down the display. The display of roughly 30 pumpkins had been reduced to six that were still intact, all before noon. Ah, oh, my word. I had a favorite comment on this one though that I read that came from Epic Meow Meow. We should make a collective noun for Karen slash entitled parents. I'm thinking a kerfuffle. <laughs> it's probably a bad one, but you Redditors can probably think of a better one. So I'm gonna pass this one to you guys. What do you think a collective noun for a bunch of entitled parents would be? <laughs> Come on, guys, you got to tell me. Our next story is from Bold Cat Frank. How dare you smoke in an isolated spot away from everyone? Throw back to a few years ago. Jay chilling at the dog beach with my friend's dog throwing a stick in the water for him when suddenly I have a craving for a durry. Durry? Durry? I'm not a smoker, you have to forgive the lingo. <laughs> I was quitting at the time. I wouldn't normally smoke around animals. However, the dog was either in the water or doing zoomies with his stick. There was only two other people, three other dogs on the beach, at least 100 meters away. So I sparked a cancer stick and inhaled that glorious nicotine that I still pine for all these years later. Cue the entitled parents. 
Note, it's a one way in and out access to this sheltered dog beach and see them coming, so be the conscientious person that I am, I shift closer to the water's edge to allow them and their kid to walk safely past from my secondhand smoke. I notice as soon as they get on the beach they start eyeing me out. The kid runs ahead and as it passes it veers closer to me slash the water's edge with about 10 meters distance from my lung cancer bubble. The father immediately starts yelling at me about how I shouldn't be smoking around his family, rah rah rah, and I'm completely taken back and start laughing out of shock. I said, <laughs> what? And he said, and it's disgusting and you're smoking around these dogs too. I said, you mean the one who's swimming off to Neverland over there? And points to my parents dog literally paddling off into the sunset with his stick and I have to call him back. All those ones over there, not to the direction of a lady and her two dogs leaving. And the man and his dog on the rocks about 150 meters away. Edie starts going off on a tangent about how entitled parent stuff and of course how I'm in the wrong and their little angel. I said dude I was here first, I'm away from everyone, you and your family chose to walk past me. Your kid chose to run close to me, it's my body, it's a public space and we're outdoors, move on. I can't remember the exact words Edie said but something of the nature of how trashy it is for a female to be smoking and just generally attempted to attack my character. By this stage I'm actually annoyed and it's not amusing anymore and I tell him to fuck off to which he takes great offence to be swearing in front of his kid and starts getting all puff chested and red faced and raising his verbal aggression towards me while walking closer. At this stage my parents dog has returned from his fantasy swim and comes bounding out of the water all goofy but must have sensed the tension and stands just in front of me with a straight tail and rigid body staring at the guy. I don't like the body language I'm reading so I grab the collar and feel the dog growling. Never seen him do that before, he's the biggest goofiest people dog. The mother turns around to see me holding the collar of the staunch Rottweiler type and starts going off about that dangerous dog. You shouldn't be on the beach, this is a family space. To which my response was simply laughing and stating, it is legally a dog beach, why are you even here? I'm not sure what's going on anymore but the dad's not feeling as confident in his approach after the dog's presence and turns around back to his family with both parents mouthing off at me for some distance into out of earshot. P.S. When the dog came up, I put out my half-smoked durry in the sand and put it in my pocket to put it in the bin later. Keep it green and clean, y'all. <laughs> and on the family's return trip, like five minutes later, they mouthed off to me again and started yelling about how I'd throw my ciggy butt to the sea and how I shouldn't have children. I eye-rolled so hard thinking I had an aneurysm and called back to them that I have it in my pocket. Did the kid want to grab it and take it to the bin on their way back to the car? Had a chuckle to myself while the Muppets left the beach. Oh, God. I'm not a smoker and you shouldn't be a smoker too but I do feel sorry for them like I often see people like like trying to is isolate themselves away from people being as polite as they can while they're smoking and stuff it is their bodies they can do what they want with it they shouldn't be doing it because it's bad for their health but they can do what they want with their bodies but at the same time it seems whenever they spark up a cigarette a kid a kid would come out of nowhere and walk straight past them <laughs> and then the parents would give them the, the, the as they said the stink eye <laughs> Our next story is from Lolo the Lily. Entitled parents think I should give them thousands in money. Never say thank you despite me paying their bills. My parents request I come home during all this mess, which has been the biggest mistake of my life. Seriously, it was an awful move. And once I'm out of there, I'm never speaking to these people again. I have a good amount of money coming in because I work my ass off and some projects are finally paying off. When I first got here several weeks ago, I started requesting random bills to pay. My mum said that would be awesome and fake being happy when I know she clearly expected to make bank off me. Car insurance, cell phone bills, house payments etc. I've been happily paying them. Not only have they said thank you once, which I wouldn't mind if they just showed some sort of not negative emotion, but they're constantly making me wait several days to pay these bills and being weirdly aggressive about it. The next logical step is not to pay the bills right, except when I said I wouldn't help if it bothered them, my stepdad flipped shit and called me a freeloader. So my taxes came and I decided to give my mum $400 because I have good money coming in. I also ordered random odds and ends that I would need slash want. Not only was I not told thank you for the $400, but now as my things come in every time something arrives in the mail, they both get passive aggressive. It does not matter if it's a $9 skin cream. I might as well have lavished myself with gold by the way they are acting. I also told my mum because I made enough to get the $1,200. When it comes, I'm going to give her $500. When I told her this, she got weirdly passive aggressive about it and I could tell she wants the whole 1200. I don't get it, they make good money. They both just got more than me back in taxes. Also it does not help that they have done nothing but shit on me and ride my ass since I got here, treating me like trash. 
even recruiting my brother into it. Seriously, they have made me feel lower than dirt. I'm crying myself to sleep every night because of how they are treating me every day. And just now my stepdad messaged me that I need to knock off the spending spree and grow up. Excuse the fuck out of me because I know they raised me, but in my world, if anyone happily gives you thousands in cash without complaint, you need to at least be nice to them. But with them, they clearly want every penny I have and treat me like trash. I own a home, I have a life, I have a career. I don't need to grow up. I'm fucking grown. I would dip today if my state wasn't at a stay at home order and if I wasn't so worried about my mum who works with the public. Edit additional detail. We live in a state where it's dirt cheap to live. Just to really put emphasis on how bullshit it is that my thousands haven't been enough money for them. The money I've spent in one month here will pay someone's rent in this state for five months. I've given them a lot. I think I deserve a good job or a thank you for helping. All I want for them is to show me some kind of love. Classic abuse right there. Oh my god. I think even in, I think, I'm not sure in the US, but in the UK, if you're suffering mental health or you're with people that are absolutely doing your head in, you can actually still leave and move in with someone else. That is still a rule. Hopefully it is in the US and they can actually do something about it because they're both abusing you, even your mum that you care about. You need to get out of there because it's not good for your mental health. It won't be good for you in the future. What do you guys make of that story? Absolutely nuts. Anyway, guys, a massive thank you for being here once again today. It is truly appreciated. As I mentioned, the last couple of days with likes and comments has been amazing. So if we could do this again, it would be amazing. I love responding to your comments. I respond to as many as I possibly can. I love hearing your opinions on the stories. Yes, and don't forget to like the video too as it truly helps it out. And thank you for being here. The time out of your day is truly, truly appreciated. And I will see you in the next one. Much love, guys.